Namaste. Welcome to Asana with Erin. I am Erin. And today I'm very excited to bring you all this flow that is going to help you ease your mind and relieve or calm down anxious thoughts. I know that as I'm releasing this video, there is quite a lot going on in the world right now. And it's crazy that it's not just in the country I live in, but it is across the entire world that everyone is sort of going through this unknown, uncertain time. I would like to share with you all that I have suffered with anxiety in the past and I have never been diagnosed with an anxiety disorder, but I certainly know what it is like to have anxious thoughts and racing thoughts through the mind. One of the best things that I have ever done in my life is to start my practice of yoga. Yoga has helped me through some very confusing and anxious times. And of course, going through this time myself has been a little bit confusing. So I have relied a lot on practice of yoga to help me calm my anxious thoughts. I figured that it was a great idea for me to share some of those poses and that practice with you all today. Hopefully you can practice these poses and this flow and it can help you to ease your mind and calm some of those anxious thoughts. If you are watching this video much along or past this time of this pandemic, whatever we're going through, um, these poses are still valid. <laughs> so this is not just for what we're going through now. This is for anxiety, anxious thoughts of all kinds. You don't need any props today except a blanket. We're going to use it at the end, so just have some sort of blanket near you. That is all you're going to need today besides your mats and yourself. But if you don't have a mat, you can always just practice on the floor um, or on the carpet if there's a comfy place in your house. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's do some yoga. We'll begin our practice today in active child's pose. So bring your knees to the inside edges of your mat, put the tops of your feet down, big toes come together to touch. Sit your seat back onto your heels, walk your arms out long in front of you, and place your forehead to the mat. Today I want to give you the option, if it's more comfortable for you, you could bring your knees a little bit closer together and take your arms by your sides. Just taking that different arm variation, if that's something that will serve you better today, then take that. But if it's alright, just keeping your arms extended long, forehead on the mat. We'll take about eight breaths here. And this is a wonderful place and pose that not only brings rest into the physical body, but it also allows us to be still and pay attention to our thoughts. So if you have a racing mind and lots of thoughts that are repeating themselves over and over again, maybe just try noticing your thoughts and then letting them go. Not letting the thought trail on or repeat itself over and over. But just as each thought comes up, just noticing it and letting it go. We actually do have the ability to choose our thoughts and to feed the thoughts that are benefiting us and to let go of the thoughts that are not benefiting. When we choose to let go of a thought though, we have to do it intentionally and we have to fully support it throughout the entire body. So when you choose to let your thought go, allow your entire body to make that decision to let it go. Let it exit your body, remove it from the mind, and move on. If you're having difficulty even doing that, 
Just pay attention to your breath. Maybe visualize your breath going in and out. Find something that mimics your breath, maybe like um, a balloon filling up with air and emptying and visualizing your breath as that. Just starting to really hone in on the rhythm of your breath and paying attention to the energy that you have going on within you now, not trying to reject it or change it, just noticing. On your next exhale breath, draw your low belly in, up, and back. And on your inhale, press into your palms and walk yourself upright. Bring your knees closer together so they touch and sit onto your heels. If this is uncomfortable for you or painful, like you have a knee issue, you can come into an easy sit position just like so, all right? But I will be doing this pose through the kneeling position. Take your right hand to your belly and take your left hand to your heart. Soften your shoulders down. Find one point for your eyes to gaze at and fixate them there. Don't let your eyes move. We're going to take 10 full breaths here. And as you breathe, I want you to think about breathing into your hands. So as you inhale, letting the breath fill up your hands. Exhale, let it empty. Inhale. of your breath in your palms. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. As you do this, letting your body start to settle in, deepening. Inhale. So as you're doing this stretch, 
Noticing any places where you've got any catching or resistance and just breathing into those places, letting some of that tension melt. On your inhale, come back to center. We're going down. On your exhale, tilting your chin towards your chest. Feel your head getting a little heavier at the crown of your head and letting it drop a little further. Shoulders coming away from your ears. Inhale, bring your chin back up. On your exhale, your right ear dips towards your right shoulder. Noticing if your shoulders are kind of creeping up a little bit as you do this towards your ears and just letting them soften down. Especially that left shoulder, letting it soften down, increasing that stretch on the left side. We go down one more time as you exhale, chin towards chest. Notice your belly getting softer as you breathe in and out. Your breath is still very intentional, but you're resisting that urge to tighten through the belly. You're letting it be soft as you breathe. Inhale, bring your chin back to center. We're coming into tabletop position. Walk your hands out. Come into tabletop. Shoulders over the wrists, hips over the knees. We take four cat-cows. Take an inhale breath. As you exhale, starting from your tailbone, rounding all the way up through your spine, tucking the chin towards your chest. As you inhale, lift your chin, lift your chest, belly will drop towards the mat, your tailbone lifts last. Exhale, rounding. Going as deep as you can, really arcing that back up. And inhaling, going the opposite direction into your cow. Belly drops down, really press in the palms and get that chest to pull through feeling the belly stretch. Exhale, rounding the other direction, coming deep into the cat. Inhaling, opposite direction, lift. One more time, exhale, rounding, working up, tucking the chin, Inhale, lift the chin, lift the chest, focusing on that breath, focusing on the body, opening, moving, feeling good, and then coming back, neutral spine. Tuck your toes behind you. Take a deep inhale breath, and as you exhale, lifting up and back, downward facing dog. Pressing your heels into the mat. And as I was saying in yoga, when we take more challenging poses, poses that require us to focus, we can remove some of those anxious thoughts from the mind because we are focusing on something deeper. And in addition to that, when we accomplish something or we stick with something challenging in yoga, we are reminded that we can also make it through challenging times in life. We're going to take a more, I would say, somewhat challenging variation of our down dog. And I encourage you to really deepen your breath and your focus during this. All right? So pressing the palms down. We're gonna start with that left side. Plant your right palm down firmly. 
and take your left hand back and grab your left heel or your left ankle rather. Keep pressing the crown of your head down, squeezing into your thighs. Breathe. And release, left hand goes back, down dog. We take that right hand, reach it back, grabbing the ankle or behind the calf. Staying strong here. Find your inner strength, your power, your breath. Increase that in your mind, focus. Good, and release, down dog. From your down dog, bend your knees and just kind of take almost like just a squat in your down dog, bending your knees. And as you exhale, pressing up and back down dog, we're looking to deepen the pose. Inhale, bend your knees, rock forward just a little bit, little tiny squat. And exhale, coming up and back. Momentum presses you back into that down dog. One more time. Inhale, bend your knees. And exhale, pressing up, back, down dog. Beautiful. Take your feet a little closer together. We're going to high step up to the top of the mat. So looking up at your hands, we're going to lift one leg at a time. So lift your left leg up and place it down, left foot goes right in front of the right. Inhale that right leg up, and place it right in front of the left. Same thing, inhale that left leg, step it in front of the right, good. Right leg lifts higher, step it in front of the left. One more here, lift that left leg. This time, just finding that Uttanasana, your forward bend, Feet are about hip distant, bending the knees. Low belly touches the thighs, relax your head down. On your next inhale, slowly just round yourself all the way up to standing. When you get to the top, roll your shoulders up, down, and back two times. Stay facing the direction you are. I'm just going to turn to face you so that you can see me better. We're going to take Vrkhasana tree pose. This pose is excellent for calming anxious thoughts because it requires us to focus on something and really draw that focus in into the body. All right, so we start on the right, excuse me, left side, taking your right leg and pressing it into the mat. Press your right foot down. Bring your left foot up and either take a little kickstand here. You can take your foot to your calf or you can bring it to your inner upper thigh. Don't place your foot on your knee. Once you have your foot on your leg, pressing it into that standing leg, almost like a tree trunk, right? Bring your hands heart center. You can also extend your arms overhead like a tree that's growing. Find one place to gaze and keep your eyes still. Breathe. your left knee back to the center line and place it down to meet your right. Hands come down by your sides. We do that right side. Weight goes into your left foot. Engage your left thigh. Bring the right foot up. Place it to the same position that you had it on the other side. Pressing the foot into the leg. Creating kind of like a nice secure attachment. Take your hands wherever you had them on the other side. 
find maybe the same focal point to gaze at or something different. Keep your eyes steady, don't let them move, and breathe. Bring your right knee to the center line and place it down to meet your left, hands by your sides. Let's take two cleansing breaths. Inhale through your nose, arms come up and overhead. Exhale out the mouth. One more inhale. Exhale out the mouth. Good. We're going to fold forward again. Bring your hands to heart center. Inhale, arms lift straight up overhead. And as you exhale, fold. Place your hands to the mat. And step back into a high push-up plank. Taking our plank position, it is a challenging pose, which is great because it forces us and encourages us to focus on the task at hand. And again, it also shows us that we are able to make it through challenging things. We are strong humans and we are able to get through things that are challenging. Holding here one more breath, squeezing the thighs up, squeezing the belly in. Good, lowering onto your knees and finding this tabletop position. Now from here, we're going to go into a headstand, which is Sirsasana 1. If you do not headstand or you have never taken a headstand before, you are more than welcome to try this at home. I would recommend being close to a wall and kicking up towards the wall so that if you fall, you won't come crashing down, you'll just fall into the wall. Um, headstand is really great because it flips our perspective. It makes us see the world in a different way and it also helps us to invigorate our nervous system and kind of enhance what is troubling it, if there's anything troubling it. All right, so I'm gonna take this here on my mat, but feel free to move yourself to a place where you can feel comfortable taking this. And if you don't wanna take headstand at all, I encourage you to come into child's pose, Balasana, like we started with. All right, so if you are taking your headstand, bring your hands into an interlaced grip. Take your hands behind your head and start to dive the crown of your head down towards the mat. Once the crown of your head is on the mat, get your interlaced down so that your pinkies are on the ground and hug your elbows in so they are about the width of your shoulders. Tuck the toes behind you and lift your hips up. Start to tiptoe your toes in towards your face until you feel some of your weight shifting into your shoulders and into your elbows. Pressing down into the elbows and squeezing into the shoulders. You can maybe play around with lifting one leg at a time like so. Or if you'd like to come up, you can slowly bend one knee and maybe bring it up, followed by the other one, squeezing into the belly muscles, maybe staying here in this little crouch position, or you can extend the legs all the way up. 
and we'll hold here for about two breaths. Start to make your way down, just slowly bringing one foot down at a time. Bringing your knees to the mat, tops of feet will go down, and we'll all take Velasana Child's Pose. The arms go by the sides, forehead onto the mat. And while you're here, I just want to remind you that if maybe you just took headstand for the first time ever, and you just attempted it and you've never done it before, I just want you to know that that alone is enough. When we are practicing yoga, we are never looking for perfection, especially when we're first doing something. If we expect perfection from ourselves, we will often be disappointed. <laughs> So take a breath here and just remind yourself of just how strong, amazing, and unique you are. And remind yourself that you are imperfect and that is actually perfect. Take one more breath. On your next inhale, sit up onto your heels. We're going to breathe again, this time taking your left hand to your low belly, right hand to your heart. If you need to take easy sit position, just take easy position, otherwise stay here. Find a focal point to gaze at and let your eyes be still. We take five breaths. Inhale, breathing into the palms. Exhale. Inhale, breathing into the palms. And exhale, letting all that air empty. Inhale, breathing in. Exhaling out. Inhale. Exhale. One more inhale. Exhale. Let your arms come down by your sides. All right, for this next pose, we're gonna be using a ball. If you don't have a ball near you though, um, you can do this without a ball. But I'm going to turn to face this back wall behind me. And this pose is just called legs up the wall. So scoot yourself nice and close towards the wall. I like to kind of get right up next to it. And then lie down. From here, you're just going to want to take your feet up. And make sure that you are scooted in all the way in towards the wall so that you can stack your ankles, your knees, and your hips all in line with one another. Taking your hands down by your sides, or if it's more comfortable, you can let them rest onto your belly. Take your gaze towards your big toes, and just allow yourself to focus on your breath, moving in and out, feeling some of the blood flow emptying out of your legs, getting some new blood in there. Whenever I'm in an inversion of this type, I always like to focus on that feeling of the blood sort of draining out of my legs. And I like to think of it as a very renewing and refreshing process, almost as if the exhaustion or anxiety or anything that has been built up in the body is just draining out, sort of replenishing, renewing. And we'll hold here for about four more breaths.
start to make our way down. To make your way out of this pose, I like to just bend my knees and roll to one side. And press my way up using that top hand. And we're just gonna come back to the mat and take Supta Baddha Konasana. Have that blanket nearby, the one that we're gonna use. Just have it close and lie all the way down onto your back. Taking Supta Baddha Konasana, just bringing your feet together and letting your knees flop open. Bring your hands to your low belly. We'll breathe about four breaths here, really breathing into your hands. Letting your shoulders melt into the mat. Your elbows are soft. Your knees are soft. The toes are soft as well. Starting to settle into the mat. Again, noticing any thoughts that are repetitive or cyclical, ones that are not benefiting you. Just allowing them to come up and then letting them go. Take your hands to the outsides of your thighs and use them to close your knees back together. From here, just rock and roll yourself up to a seated position. And we're going to take it into our final rest, Shavasana, using a blanket today. So when we use a blanket in Shavasana, I just absolutely love the feeling of it and Shavasana alone is so great for relieving anxiety, but I know a lot of us struggle with staying still and keeping the mind still for a longer period of time. So by using the blanket and bringing it on top of us, we can really just feel that support and sort of almost like we are being hugged into our shavasana. So go ahead and take your blanket, unfolding it, covering up your feet, and then working up onto your legs, and finally coming down onto your back. It feels so nice and so cozy. And then you're gonna take the blanket Bring it all the way up so that just your head is out. Take your arms by your sides. Let your toes flop open. Feel the weight of the blankets and just the coziness of it supporting you. Letting some of your anxious thoughts Come up again and go. And finally, finding a place where you can rest your mind. Closing your eyes top to bottom. And if you have still a racing mind here, perhaps just starting from your toes and naming each body part as you work your way up to the crown of your head, allowing the mind to focus on something. And hopefully when you get to the top of your head, you'll find it easier to rest. Shavasana.